Tonight's lesson comes from two different passages of Scripture. First, Mark chapter 1, verses 29 to 39, and Luke chapter 5, verses 12 through 14. And tonight we're going to talk about stress. And we're going to look at the case study uh Tonight is part one. Next Friday is uh, going to be part two. Uh, normally, when a topic is taught, you, you start with what not to do. But I'm going to start with what to do. And then next week, we'll look at how not to handle stress. But tonight, we're going to look at the case study of Jesus and his example on how to handle situations to you. And let's go old school and just start with a recap of what the definition of stress is. Uh, stress is pressure or tension, a state of mental or emotional strain resulting from adverse or very, or very demanding circumstances. And I think we've all felt stressed at one time or another, the pressure, the strain, the tension of, of work, of family, of health, of finances, of school, of community, of the, the news, uh, I could go on. Uh, but some of the synonyms for stress, load, weight, anxiety, concern, uneasiness, worry, aggravation, anger, annoyance, exasperation, irritation, personal trouble. But the opposite of stress is what? Relaxation, comfort, consolation, peace. And some of the psychological and emotional signs that let you know that you're being stressed out you could have depression or anxiety. You could be irritable, feel restless, feel overwhelmed, um, have trouble sleeping or sleeping too much to escape the stress that you're in. Racing thoughts, racing thoughts, constant worry, uh, problems concentrating, uh, problems with memory, making bad decisions, stress, and it affects your health. Uh, many things have been uh, covered that connect our stress to our health, high blood brains, uh, different things. But tonight we're going to look at stressful situations. We're going to take a day in the life of Jesus. And if anybody ever felt overworked, exhausted, one thing happening after another, people just having such demands placed on them, nobody uh, can compare to Jesus. And so since he is our example of how to live in this earth, we're going to begin part one with looking at Jesus in Mark chapter and part one with looking at Jesus in Mark chapter one, verse 29 through 39, and I'm going to begin reading right now. And I'm reading in the New King James Version. Now, as soon as they had come out, being Jesus and his disciples, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother, or his mother in law, lay sick with a fever. And they told him, Jesus, about her at once. So he came and took it her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she served them. And at evening, when the sun had set, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were demon-possessed. And the whole city was gathered together once at the door. Then he healed many who were sick at the door. Then he healed many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons. And he did not allow the demons to speak because they knew him. Now I'm going to stop there at verse 34. 
and I'm going to go over to Luke and chapter 5, verses 12 through 14. And as it happened, when he was in a certain city, that behold, a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus, and he fell on his face and implored him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then he put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing to be cleansed. And immediately the leprosy left him. And Jesus charged him to tell no one, but rather to go and show himself to a priest and make an offering for his cleansing as a testimony, as, as Moses had commanded. However, the report went around concerning Jesus all the more, and the great and great multitudes came together to hear him and to be healed of their infirmities. So let's just break this let's just break this down really quickly, uh, recapping. Phase one, after teaching in the synagogue and bringing deliverance and healing to a man in the synagogue possessed with an unclean spirit. Okay, so Jesus had been teaching. While he's teaching, he causes to heal this person of leprosy, uh, no, of an unclean spirit. This is Mark chapter 1, the preceding verses, verses 21 through 28. Phase two, Jesus and the disciples leave Go to Simon Peter and Andrew's home, probably to get some rest, retire, retire for the day, only to find another demand on Jesus. Simon's mother-in-law has a fever. They told Jesus at once and he healed her and she served them. So you would think that as she serves them, they're eating, they're relaxing. That's the day. Teaching, coming home, healing someone, being served dinner, rest for the evening. No, no, because at evening, after they had eaten, after the scripture says in verse 32 of the first chapter of Mark, at, e Mark, at evening, after the sun had set, the same day, they brought to Jesus all who were sick and oppressed and the scripture points out the whole city. Everybody that was sick in the whole city, whole city at their door. The scripture said Jesus healed them and set them free. Phase that 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 was his day. His entire day healing. Trying to get a meal in, trying to relax in the evening. They bring in more people and more people. And if you just think about your life and your work day, maybe your work week, maybe you're in a season where it's just demand after demand after demand being placed on you and you are beginning to feel stressed. Maybe it's a family situation. You're taking care of, care of this one and then this one and then that one. Do you have any time left even to take care of yourself? Uh, never mind the worry of the cares of the natural cares of this life demands being placed on you. Well, what did Jesus do? What example did he leave us? The beautiful verse that's coming up is chapter 1 of Mark, verse 35. And it reads... In the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, Jesus went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. And if we look, and if we look at Luke chapter 5, after the demand of uh, healing people and healing the leper, verse 15 the report went around concerning Jesus all the more and great multitudes came together to hear and be healed by him of their infirmities. Verse 16, so he himself, Luke 5 verse 16, often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. But let's go back to verse 35 of Mark 1. 
That's our core scripture. In the having risen a long while before daylight, Jesus went out and departed to a solitary place. And there he prayed. That is our solution for stress, for being overwhelmed, for feeling, feeling so many demands upon us. Look at what Jesus did. He, first of all, because the scripture starts off saying now in the morning, after that long demanding day, Jesus went to sleep. Physical rest is, necess is necessary when you are being stressed. When you have so many demands placed on you and you feel stressed, you have got to take care of your physical body. Physical stress releases, I'm sorry, physical rest will release, or release. Stress just isn't a mental thing. Your body feels that stress. And so when you rest, you're, you're giving your body rest, even though your mind may be racing. But we have an antidote for the mind in the morning. All right, so part two. First, he rested his body. And then in the morning, long before daylight. So he rose early, earlier than normal. He got up before daylight. And then it says daylight. And then it says he went out and departed. He left his surroundings. Sometimes when you're full of stress, you got to get away. You got to get away. And the scripture says to a solitary place. Separated himself from the crowd, from the group, from the home, the household. And he went somewhere by himself, not to a crowded park or a crowded cafe or another group, another home with a bunch of people. No, it says a solitary place. place. And what did he do when he got there? He prayed. And it's all it's a companion verse. Verse 16 of Luke 5 says the same thing. So he himself, because of the demands on the multitudes, often withdrew into the wilderness, drew into the wilderness, a solitary place, and prayed. I had a few days away earlier this week that I spent in a solitary place uh, with a skeleton crew uh, through this Mother's Day weekend, the first Mother's Day weekend without my mother. Stress of a different kind. Um, I lost my mother. I've shared before uh, here at WTMR on the air that we lost my mother suddenly in January, January 9th of this year. The, suddenly in January, January 9th of this year, the Lord called her home and he didn't check with us to see if it was all right with us. He called his daughter home. And so she is resting in the master's arms right now. Uh, but it has certainly left, left a gigantic, tremendous hole uh, and devastation um, in our lives. And as we approach Mother's Day, um, we are going through all different kinds of feelings, and stress is certainly one of them. And so I withdrew myself uh, to move in northeast Maryland for four days just to, to get away in a solitary place. And I've never been to Sandy Cove on the off-season but it was even more beautiful. There were no conferences going on, no retreats. The hallways were not, filled, were not filled with hustle and bustle. The dining room was not filled with a bunch of people. It was a skeleton crew and skeleton visitors. And so it just made the peaceful place even that much more peaceful. Uh, the beautiful land and, the, you know, right there on the Northeast River, East River, uh, right at our our foot, our footsteps, uh, right at our fingertips, and just to sit and look at creation and just be at peace with God and just to pray and 
meditate and listen to scriptures and listen to sermons and just regroup to feast to come, the weekend to come. And so this is um, what Jesus did. He rose early that morning, a long while before daylight. He went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. And guess what? Verse 36 tells us, and Simon and those who were with Jesus began looking for him. They woke up. They're looking all around the house. Where is Jesus? They started looking for him, and when they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. And Jesus said, let us go to the next town that I may preach there. Let us go to the next town that I may preach there, because for this purpose I have come forth. And he was preaching in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and casting out demons. He got that rest in that solitary place. He prayed and he was ready to purpose. And so when we are faced with stressful situations and the demands and cares of this life are upon us, we have got to remember to steal away, take, a, take some time out to, to get away. Uh, if you can't do it physically, you should, you should be doing it spiritually, daily, stealing away into your closet to pray. But sometimes you need to be even more intentional than that and go away somewhere, away from everyone. Just just you and Jesus. Regroup, refresh, restore, get refilled, and you're able to continue on in your purpose, whatever that may be. Jesus continued to have multitudes following him and multitudes that he needed to heal and deliver but he took the time out, take care of his body and take care of his spirit. And he left that as an example for us. Truly, he was all man and all God. But he left that as an example for us, what we should do when we feel the demands and the cares of this world and stress uh, 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 weighting us down. And so that is the Bible review for this evening the jesus is the case study for tonight next week is part two when we're going to look at stress again but we're going to look at two at two people other than jesus and